Tech Rabbit here. So in this video we're gonna go and um, put the motherboard and the power supply into the case and um, see that it still works. So anyway, the power supply is going to be in this orientation and it's, it's going to be lifted into there. And then it has screws provided already. So you have four of these small screws actually screw it in and then um, what I usually like to do is I like to actually go through the cables and pre pre plug in the cables that are actually going to be needed for the build uh, <coughs> it makes it a little bit easier so um, let's go through the cables so if you watched my previous video we already went through the process of testing the motherboard I can put a um, link up there somewhere um, so we know we need the 24 pin connector for the motherboard, uh, so we can actually disconnect this one here. So it goes into this corner, like that. And then we also we need to have the 4 pin um, 12 volt available. Black on black is just so anyway. So those are connected. Then we also need to um, going to be installing some SATA hard drives. So there's going to be four of them. I'm, so I'm going to actually install uh, pre-install two power cables for those. I mean these can um, power theoretically three, but they're going to be in uh, two different locations. The hard drives. So I'm going to actually use two. two. Say the cable power, plug it in there, and then um, to power the fans in the case, I need to have this legacy um, power cable. So that's all the cables connected. So now we need to um, need to try and insert it into the case. Oh, the softening rubber seems to have come disconnected a bit. I wonder if it's come off the other side. It doesn't even have on there. Also it's stuck in the back. Can't be stuck in the bottom, is it? Only on one side. Though. Can't see that the other rail had one. But anyway, okay. So now we can drive this around. Orientation. Double check that the holes are matching. Carefully insert this big thing in. Get in there. So, and then I screwed in with the power supply screws, which were provided. Tighten them completely, leave them a bit loose so that you can get the other ones in. Let's 
So you need to move the power supply a bit to get the holes to match up. So it's not, not a good idea to tighten one of them and end up having problems aligning up the next one. Pretty much in place. Down. Sure. And then um, this is the reason why you want to put the power cables in beforehand because it's actually re relatively tight fit. So now we need to um, get the motherboard in and with the motherboard it's very important to check that the um, standoffs are in the right position related to the screw holes in the, on the motherboard. So, um, I mean in a standard ATX configuration you could probably get away with these standoffs but this is some um, this actually does have um, an extra row of screws, so I am, and the case comes with an, a, a little kit, which actually has more standards. So I'm going to add the three missing standoffs now. So, I'll get those three out and be back. So, I have a few tips actually that might be useful. It's very good to have this kind of small socket set so that you can actually get a good grip on those. I mean, you can use pliers, but it's, um, it's actually much easier if you can actually have a socket. And then um, when you're screwing these in for the first time, or in, in there, I recommend that you actually use your hand to uh, make sure you get it in there. Because this is like copper. So it can't really take the mishandle. This is, this is the thing when you have thin metal plate and then you try and make a thread in it. So I'll have to try and do that carefully to get it threaded. Then the other important thing that they, um, the, 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 the screws, there's lots of screws which come with the case and they're all very small and they're all black and it's actually very hard to see which has what thread. So. Just as a bit of a warning, this has screws which are the same sizes, but they have different threads. So you actually want to make sure that you take the screw, which has a thread, where you can actually screw the screw into the standoff without forcing it. So I'm going to use my hands and um, get these standoffs started. And wish me luck, because... Um, you know when they make when they make threads in, in this plate steel it sometimes doesn't work out that way. So that's um standoffs in place. Didn't really like the way they screwed in or a little bit tight. But you know that's when you're dealing with this this um, plate that it's not easy to make threads in. Yeah, but um and then we need to install this. And there's a side comment, um, usually motherboards come with a back plate that you need to insert first before you put the motherboard in. But since this is a, uh, an old motherboard, um, I actually don't know where the back plate is. <laughs> I can't even remember if I actually got it with this. So it's going to have to live, without, live in here without a back plate. It's quite hard to um, find it. And um, usually if you're installing the motherboard, it's actually easier to um, turn the um, case horizontal. But 
since I'm filming, I'm going to actually try. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, so not a good idea. Makes filming easy. As I said, not recommended. Put it down on the table, horizontal. Then you just lift in the other one. It's actually much easier. And then there's three uh, times three screws, so there's one row down here, and one in the middle, one up here. But I think I'll actually do it. Put it down for the rest of the screw. So this is the way you're supposed to have it. So, anyway, I'll put the rest of the screws in and be back. Yeah, and again, when you put these in, put them in not tight. And when you've got them all in, then you go around and you, you tighten it up the final tightness. So, that's the motherboard in place. So, the next thing is to get um, some basic things connected. Find the best route. The cable. Oops, I need to, I need to check what orientation. It's there. Or I push it through in the right orientation. Well, that's tight. Seems to be a 
hole here. Easy to see how that went. But now it's plugged in. So that's okay. So now we need to sort out the sound power. So now I actually took the, the power lead from the front into the back. Because then we can plug it into our, our legacy lead here. drives. I'll clean these up a little bit later. So now I'm just going to uh, connect things up. So, so now we've got that far, now we need to, um, well, we need to, need to uh, you could power it up by um, short circuiting the power pins, but um, now I'm going to connect in the um, chassis buttons, USB 3, some audio connectors, possibly USB 2, I have to check. But they're they're in the manual for the um, case. And then when you look at the motherboard manual, then it, will, it contains a layout. It will tell you um, where, where the different connectors are. And then even more detailed for the small, small functions, then you have this connector layout. So I'm not going to bore you with me reading the manuals and installing those. I will um, use this um, information and um, get those connected. We'll be back soon. So, that's done. Um, USB 3.0, uh, USB 2.0, the audio connector for the front panel, and then here in this block you have the uh, power switch, reset switch, hard drive light and power light. So just have to plug them in as described here. A little fiddly job. And um, I don't have RGB LED sync on this machine. So um, I can't connect in this extra cable here which goes to the fan LED controller. Oh, but anyway, now it should be theoretically connected or connected enough with external controls to do the boot check. So I'll just get the rest of the power cables and stuff connected. So anyway, monitor zone, power's in, power on. And then we have to press the power button. See what happens. a picture because I forgot to plug in the monitor. <laughs> if you followed my previous videos, uh, this this the the, the monitor you know, is actually a suspect in itself. It, um, it's not guaranteed to work. But anyway, this has no operating system on it. It has a um, SSD on the motherboard, but there's nothing on it. So it's it's um, what's displayed is what is expected. So I think that we can be um, and the fans are running and the LEDs are in their default mode 
Anything else to check? CPU fan is running as expected. And if it's displaying text like it is now, then it's it's actually sane on the motherboard. So anyway, if you like this one, um, consider hitting the like button if you'd like to follow up other videos in this series. Um, hit the subscribe button. I have um, merch available, or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, links are in the description. And um, the next uh, next video will be putting the um, storage hard drives on it and um, getting that part sorted out. So, I'll see you in the next one.